The GPD Pocket 4 might be the most versatile laptop, netbook, ultra portable PC, whatever you want to call it, whatever name you want to give it for a laptop like this. It's a small laptop when it wants to be with a large chiclet style keyboard, backlit, touchpad, mouse buttons, and everything right at your fingertips. Turn the screen around and it's now a tablet that you can use for manga, comics, plex, visual novel games, and whatever you want. Change it into a gaming laptop and there's an HX370 inside of here. So there's plenty of power and suddenly you're off playing Forza Horizon 5 at 1600p medium settings and loving it. Or you can grab a GameSir G8 Plus and use that to turn it into a tablet with controls on the side to get the best of all world with proper controls and proper gaming. Maybe you're an IT professional or you just manage a server at home like I do and you have a headless server. You use the KVM module at the back to get to that HDMI and see what's going on with your PC. And so on and so on and so on, but the long story short is this might actually be the most versatile laptop, tablet, netbook, whatever that I've ever used. Honestly, this is kind of a beast spec-wise. You have the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 processor, or there's also an 8840U version. The one I have here today is the HX370. It has the Radeon 890M as the GPU. Mine has 64 gigabytes of LP DDR5X, 7500 RAM, but I believe the lowest you can get is 16 or 32 gigabytes. My model here has a two terabyte M2 2280 NVMe drive, but there are other options. It has a beautiful 8.8 inch, 144 Hertz, 2560 by 1600 IPS display. It is the same as the Lenovo Y700, for those of you familiar with that. There is two USB-A ports, HDMI 2.1, 2.5 gigabyte ethernet, USB 4 port for eGPU support, a normal USB-C port, and a headphone jack. There's also a fingerprint sensor on the power button for easy logging in. Then we have Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. And if you thought that was it, no, there's removable modules you can add to this thing. I am using the KVM module with HDMI in and USB-C, but there is a micro SD card module that comes with the device. Then there is an extra optional 4G LTE module and even an RS-232 module that you can buy. All of this in a pretty cool form factor and only 770 grams of weight, which sounds larger than it is. It actually doesn't feel that way at this size. This is all available right from What Geek's website, which you can use my code Joey12 for an extra 12% off. All of this is in the description if you need it. What Geek has actually been really good to me, and thank you to them for sending me this device as well as other devices that lets me feature them on the channel and show you all what to buy and what not to buy in a lot of cases. Now they also sent me this laptop cooler by Fly Diggy, Fly Diggy, Fly, Fly Diggy, you know what I'm talking about. It has a few adjustable cooling modes, a pretty comfy base, and it has a nice felt top. At first I thought it was huge, but after using it with the Pocket 4, I actually came to like it quite a bit. It's definitely a nice cool add-on, all puns intended, to consider when you want to keep the laptop on your lap and maybe have a little bit extra cooling and all that sort of thing. Now I showed off the GameSir G8 Plus earlier and I wanted to share that while you can use it, it is a bit tough without using some awesome 3D printed parts by a user named TK. This uses the USB ports to make it secure and it adds clearance at the back for the fan. And all of it just helps to make the G8 Plus a little bit more usable with the Pocket 4. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, this is where today's video sponsor, PCBWay, comes in because you can take that STL design or really any design you find on web, throw it into PCBWay's website and they can print it and send it to you. It saves you the hundreds and hundreds of dollars of not needing a 3D printer. Trust me, I have a 3D printer, cost me hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You don't need to do that if you just want to print a few different things. Honestly, using PCBWay for all of your retro handheld 3D things is a must in this hobby. Check them out and all of the other things that they do that are all pretty cool. So I talked about a few different use cases earlier today of what the Pocket 4 does that normal laptops really don't. I have been using a really cheap sort of laptop, just a normal 14 inch laptop for just on the go things when I'm just on the couch, that sort of thing. But 
it doesn't have nearly the same amount as ports or anything that the Pocket 4 has. There's no Ethernet port, there's no HDMI in, there's none of that sort of thing. And it is also very, very big, well, big normally, because it is a big 14-inch laptop. But then, on the other hand, you have the Pocket 4, which is a nice, easy, portable laptop that is not big, it's pretty small, and it has a whole bunch of stuff inside. Plus, it has the KVM module, which, again, is my favorite part of this whole thing. In laptop mode, the 8.8 inch screen definitely takes some getting used to if you are coming from a much larger laptop, but this is a much more manageable size, I think. If I'm going on an airplane, I would want to bring this with me. I'm actually a very big fan of the mouse controls that GPD has on the top left, with each button being the same as a mouse. So left for left click, middle for middle click, and right for right click, of course. But when you combine that with the touchpad on the right, it makes it super easy to navigate, especially considering you have the middle button to scroll for you as well. One of the unintended benefits, or maybe intended, is putting the screen at an almost 180 degree angle and using the buttons and touchpad to navigate around and do what you need. You're kind of holding it like you would a GPD Win Mini, for example, but it's just a normal laptop and you're using the touchpad and the buttons and all that, and it feels natural and it feels nice and it's something I liked. Now the keyboard here is the large chiclet style buttons, and this is a great choice as well. They have crammed everything that you need here, as you can use the shift and FN buttons to do whatever you want with the different button combinations, and it takes some getting used to. You can even see as I'm doing it that I had trouble finding the apostrophe, for example, which is in the bottom right. And you have to get used to where all the different things are because they're not in the normal location that you would expect. So that's one of the, I guess, easy negatives in the beginning as you get used to things on the keyboard. But for just straight typing and actually using it is actually really nice. Not as good as a full size keyboard, of course, but it is close enough that it makes a nice concession between size and usability. It's a lot different than something like the GPD Win Mini, for example, which is more of their gaming focused product that has actual gaming controls on it. And then the keyboard is kind of secondary. That keyboard is really, really tough to use and you can't really write out sentences. You can't really write out anything or emails. It's more for shortcuts and passwords and all of that. Whereas the Pocket 4 doesn't have that problem. Now again, the ports and everything on the Pocket 4 is what gets me giddy. Honestly, anytime a device has an ethernet port, never mind the fact that this has a 2.5 gigabyte one, I, I'm a huge fan, I love that. I love ethernet ports, always have ethernet ports. But the KVM module, again, for my uses, is the standout feature. I have a headless mini PC server that is always on, 24 seven, and I typically remote into it. But every once in a while, Remote won't work, and I have to lug down a portable monitor and all of those cables and everything to connect it, and it is a big hassle. Instead, I just HDMI in to the Pocket 4, USB-C to C for controls, and now I can see and navigate the server and do what I need to do. It is beautiful. Now, I use the native GPD app for this. They have an HDMI in app, and that has some input latency. I even tried it out with the Switch 2, and it had a bunch of input latency. I didn't really like that experience. However, I found that if I used OBS as a capture device program, all of the latency disappeared. So, remoting in, or not remoting in, but going HDMI in and USB-C controls worked perfectly. Even using the Switch 2 this way had no input latency at all either. So it was a fun little thing that I discovered was their HDMI in app, not that great for input latency and all of that. Instead, install OBS, use the video capture and make that full screen. And that works out well. I don't know what you could do with this knowledge. I don't know what other HDMI in applications there could be out there. I'm sure somebody in the comments is screaming at me right now about something else you can do. But it was just a fun little thing to try is just switch to right into the actual laptop screen. But there's probably a bunch of other things you could do with HDMI in. But that just gets me to another use case I thought of and it works out really well. I actually enjoy it. And it's manga and it's comics and it's Plex and it's that sort of thing. Turning it into tablet mode and enjoying my PC that way. I was previously using the Lenovo Y700 for all of that. And that is a fantastic media consumption device. No doubt and obviously a lot cheaper than what this is. But if you have a laptop that can do everything and it has the same screen and does all the same things, then yeah, you have a better all-in-one device. And suddenly it's like, 
I love the Y700, but I have something a lot better that does the same thing. It's a very interesting conundrum. So I just lower the TDP and I start reading or watching or whatever I want to do. And while it's definitely heavier than a Y700, it works out nicely. And especially since I'm right-handed, there is room for me to hold it without touching the screen at the same time, thanks to the little bezel part on the right. I recently bought Steins Gate during the Steam sale and my plan was to go through it using this and just by tapping. And I'm only at the beginning of the game, so I'm not sure if this changes later on, but it seems to work out well. I just double tap to get onto the next screen and it goes. I could probably turn on auto and probably make it easier, but it all seems to work out really nicely. And this was just a random use case that I thought of. However, another awesome versatile option is the ability to just use an eGPU. And again, I'm just using GPD's G1 eGPU. Gives you a nice boost to frame rate for your games. And it is also a dock at the same time. Sure, eGPUs aren't anything new or special, but it just adds to how much more this device can do compared to a lot of others. And I guess that just brings me back to the performance of the laptop. It is a full blown laptop with a pretty powerful processor, the HX370. This is no slouch for gaming, and I'm pretty familiar with it at this point as I have about three to four different devices in my house right now with the same specs. The One X Fly F1 Pro, the GPD Win Mini 2025, it's better than the ROG Ally X, the GPD Win 4, and you can keep going, but any device with an HX370, this basically matches or does better because it has 64 gigabytes of RAM inside. Now the big games are pretty playable here. Forza Horizon 5, Cyberpunk, Black Myth Wukong, and so on. Although I've become a big fan of showing other games lately that aren't as high profile and play great, I think the takeaway is you have the power to really play whatever you want. But all of that ties into the battery, the fan, and the thermals conversation, of course. There's a 45 watt hour battery inside of here, and stop me if you've heard this one before, but that can be a bit of a problem for gaming and even just general usage with this type of processor and everything. For example, I can set the TDP to five watts and then read some comics or manga, and I will get about seven to eight hours doing so. Not amazing, but it is good enough. However, raising that TDP to 15 watts, which would be normal TDP, I think for just general usage and some light gaming, and you would see about two to three hours on a charge, depending on the game and the task. But if you crank this all the way up to the max 28 watt TDP, you're going to see about an hour to hour and a half of battery life max. That can get pretty rough. So it's a bit of a widespread. It really depends on what you're doing with this a battery and a small device like this and the HX370 all combine into a really tough scenario in a lot of cases. And we've talked about this so many times now, but until battery gets some progressive upgrades at some point in the future with technology, this is kind of what we have to deal with. But again, back to the fan and thermals conversation, at a low TDP, like for reading or just casual browsing and the fan is on, and it's slightly audible, it's nothing crazy and it's nothing out of the ordinary, and with low RPM cooling, there's no heat being felt, which is good. But when you bump up the TDP to about 15 watts, and now you can feel the warmth on the back left side, and the fan is about as loud as volume 30 on the device with small hints of coil wine. It isn't a hot warmth, so the device is still fine being held and used, but you can feel it heating up for sure. Lastly, we have the full 28 watt TDP. You're gonna need about volume 50 or so to not hear the fan. And there is small hints of coil wine still, but it is mostly just the noise of the air being blown out. But unfortunately, the warmth is now heat on the left side, and it becomes very uncomfortable to hold. I think there's rarely ever a need or time to crank this to a full 28 watt TDP, unless you are going to dock it. But I think the cooling and heat management at 15 watts and lower is actually really good. Surprisingly, I find it to be a lot better than the GPD Win Mini, which likely shares a lot of the same parts. But once again, it is the same scenario as the Win Mini, where it is the SSD section of the device that is the part that gets hot. So here on this device, it is the back left that gets hot, whereas the back right, where the fan is, is nice and cool. So it's the same scenario as the GPD Win Mini, is the same scenario as the GPD Win 4. GPD just has these sorts of problems when it comes to heat management and cooling. And despite the fact that they've made improvements, we're still not there yet. Let's start to wrap things up here. 
Price and battery aside, which is typically the common negatives with an HX370 powered device, I am actually very happy with this netbook device because again, it nails every use case that I personally wanted and thought of when I got the device. I can comfortably read comics and manga on it. I can use it as a media device. I can use it as a gaming device in a million different ways. I can use it as a KVM module type device to manage my headless server. It is small enough to be a travel companion anywhere I want to go on any trips. And it is powerful enough to be used for gaming or really anything that I want to use it for. And it all combines into honestly a really, really cool device that you just don't see out there anymore. And I think that was my biggest takeaway out of everything today is GPD is kind of the only company that is doing something like this, something that is ultra portable PCs, the Win 4, the Win Mini, the Pocket 4, the Win Max 2, all these sorts of devices that are very unique in technology, but have no competition. There is nobody else doing these types of devices. And if you want one of those devices, it is GPD or it's nothing. That's the interesting part to me. That is why I like this device. It is very unique in the market. It is something that isn't out there and it is something that I can make use of in a lot of different ways. Let me know in the comments below. Is this on your radar at all? Am I in my own little world when it comes to the different use cases of this device? I have to admit, I have different scenarios and I think most people do. Maybe the headless server being one and the KVM module and all that. But a lot of people read comics and manga, I think, and play games and all of that. I think the price would probably be the normal restriction for a lot of people, but Again, it's unique. You have to pay to play, I guess, but it can be expensive for a lot of people, for sure. Let me know in the comments what you think totally about the Pocket 4. That's going to be it for this one. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about handhelds and little laptop PBCs, I guess. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff, and hope you all have a good one.